Ladies and gentlemen, Bon Boy Bocra. <laughs> so, Blind Boy, thank you so much for joining us. I have to say, we've never chatted in this close proximity. I find you a little bit more intimidating than uh, I expected. I'm like just in there's like a horror movie vibe in terms of that's because the bag is worn man i've done about four gigs in this bag and it's, it's, usually, <laughs> it's usually it's usually really nice but this one is worn it gives me a bit of a murderer vibe yeah it gives you a bit of a murderer vibe i'm gonna so, get no bags and no ear though man <laughs> <laughs> so uh so is the post truth thing genuinely a real problem it, it depends what you define by a problem do you know what i mean like it's it's basically a situation where we as a society uh the news that we receive and the information that we receive from politicians that it appeals to our emotional side rather than our cognitive side. So that's an issue. But I mean, <clears throat> it's always been the case, like, because religion is post-truth to an extent. Now, like, all right, if, if, if post-truth is when you reject science, you reject rationality in favor of whatever narrative appeals to your personal beliefs, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But like, in the Middle Ages, they didn't know any better. Whereas now we do. We do know better now, but we still believe harsh shit. Well, it's kind of, yeah, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because we've had more information than ever, and it feels like the more information we have, the less people are informed. Or certainly the more people are misinformed. It's, it creates, like, there's a general sense of anxiety in, in society across the world, you know? Mm. Um, some people say that post-truth exists because the truth is, is so evidently in our face and it's very painful. Like, what is it about, inter so what is it about Facebook, say? that makes people go, oh, this is true, as opposed to the Inquirer for all these years that were sitting on supermarket counters saying the same stuff, but people are going, it's in the Inquirer, it's bullshit. That's it. <clears throat> it's in the Inquirer, it's bullshit. But when something appears in your Facebook timeline, you don't know. And th the thing as well with, 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 with Facebook, we can't tell what our reality is. If you look at your Facebook timeline, you're going to have uh, a photograph of a kitten, uh, your friend talking about the jog that they did and then someone else sharing an ISIS beheading video <laughs> and The dichotomy of these images is so much that it overloads our system where all we want is a very simple narrative That will already play to our beliefs and we don't even want a happy narrative We want something that confirms our own anger. Yeah, and that's where brexit comes from. That's where Trump comes from Trump voters in America. They 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 should be voting for Bernie Sanders instead. They're voting for Trump and it's a strange thing now, we, we can't, there, there's no such thing as left or right wing anymore. Mm. Like, Hillary Clinton is supposed to be the left wing candidate, but if you ask Trump supporters why they don't want her, it's because she is, they say that she's going to start World War III. She's a globalist. She wants yeah. to... The, the, and she represents the corporations. And, exactly. Yeah. And then Trump, who's this billionaire, says that he wants to drain the swamp. He wants to get rid of lobbyists. These are left wing things. But he, and then he goes and does campaign rallies and says, oh, I was just lying about that to get elected, lads. And everyone's going, hey! Yeah. Well, that's the cult, yeah, that's the cult of the leader, right? I mean, that kind yeah. of works out. So I, I, I read that so most I, We're fucked, Des, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so what about in Ireland? Do we have, like, do we have post-truth in Ireland? Or are we... A recent attempt at post-truth was, <clears throat> you see Fianna Fáil tried to bring Bertie back there. Yeah. That's pure and utter post-truth. Because to people who are uninformed, they associate Bertie with the Celtic Tiger. They look back and go, fuck it, when Bertie was running things, I had a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, but we don't look at the fact that it was what Bertie did and his, and his associates that led us to mm. th the shit situation we're in now. So to present Bertie as this brand of, it was class in 2006, lads, and then for people to eat that up without looking at it critically, that is a post-truth narrative. But in Ireland, you know, they can't do it properly, so... <laughs> <laughs> we can't even manage. do post-truth right. Yeah. yeah. But even Fianna Gael, like you at home now, just, just type into your phone, Google Fianna Gael 1933 and see what images comes up. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh yeah, the blue shirts. They're gonna cut that out of this show. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the solution? Like, what, what, what are we gonna do now to stop uh, people getting so much anxiety that we end up in a situation where people are acting irrationally. You need to have editorial control. I mean, in the old days with newspapers, you had an editor with rigor who would look after sources. Yeah, I mean, the journal.ie has a decent fact check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the journal is grand. The comments section is a sewer. Oh, is it? Is. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
So in terms of, you're saying citizens journalism, what do you think of citizens direct action uh, across the river there in Apollo House? I think it's absolutely fantastic. We are the people of Ireland. We own the lawns that Nana has. And it is our responsibility as a people to rise up and kick him up the fucking hall. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, Blind Boy Club, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>